for our Kyoshi, but ladies and gentlemen, the drafting phase has begun between RRQ Hoshi and RSG as RRQ, they're gonna be on the blue side and RSG, they're on the red. Kaja and Marxis banned out immediately from side of RRQ saying we want to open more heroes here. Yeah, perhaps winning respect as well towards the side of RSG. Remember, they picked up Marxist a couple of times and it worked out for them. So RRQ, they want to somehow learn from that. But to close out the banning phase, they banned out that Benedetta. Yeah, that's a really good banning unit, especially. I mean, you can see DLC is like, ah, they're looking at me. I got his attention. I deserve to ban. You know, that's all me, baby. And I think it's definitely understandable because Diablo is able to kind of create the space and also scrape a lot of gold, which helps with the Singaporean almost foolproof defense. But like we saw in their matchup against Echo, there's a lot of ways to actually manipulate, uh, manipulate it and finding opportunities across the map. So. If it's going to come down to cross-map plays, I'd be interested to see if RRQ lean away from a team fight strategy to a full-on split push strategy. And on that note, talking about split push, I'm thinking of the here that can do the split split. Are RRQ going to pick up the glue here? Maybe, maybe it's wide open here, but it seems like they are taking their time here, so I'm quite surprised. Perhaps the scenario isn't there, but there you go, the carry first. Why? Because blue can be countered by the carry, so why not anticipate that and just pick up the carry themselves first? Exactly, and that's the beauty of being first pick on that blue side, but it does kind of give you that, uh, ooh, that bounce back, right? And I'm expecting for RCSG, they might lean away from that glue. The Valentina gets picked up as well as the glue. That's not too bad. But this Valentina pick here, glue is always going to be very, very relevant in this meta. I think that goes without saying. But at the very least, it forces RRQ to think about, hey, what ultimates are we giving over mm. to RSG SG? Or if they want to do the Echo style of play, you know what? We'll give you all the good ultimates. You got to pick which one you want. Yeah, you're right. Again, perhaps that is the same. That would be the approach from inside of RRQ. Again, we mentioned that Clay likes the Yeeve and he will pick up the Yeeve. And to add to that, they add another solid hero in that Frederick. The question is, who will play it, right? Will it be Albert or will it be R7? I don't know. Have we seen Albert play the Frederick? Not yet. Not but yet. Maybe not yet. it's already in his R7. Yeah, it's, it's not out of the question for Albert. I think it was a lot of discussion before, maybe during the Sea Games era, where we observed that he wasn't too great at these fighter tanks in the jungler, that his prowess was more on the assassins, but definitely still on the table for Albert now coming into M4. RSG, what are they going to respond with? Remember, the Grok is still up if they do want to go for that. Grok is still up, but I guess they might try all the... Marksman, and yeah, I was about to say Marksman, Beatrix picked up, but take a look at the win rate, 11.1%. Not a good number to rely on. Yeah, especially the fall from glory of Beatrix. Usually the most dominant, yeah. most nasty marksman until Melissa came out and then the hard nerfs came through. But still, Beatrix remains to be part of this list. Now we go into the second phase and immediately once we see the three locked in heroes, they're basically somewhat mirroring each other. They already have a mid lane locked in and secured, but for RRQ, they have the flexibility of the Frederick pick. However, for RSGSG, that might not necessarily be the case unless they've been practicing Valentina in multiple positions. I mean, that glue itself is also a flexible brick, right? Can't enter the room, can't enter the XP. But as the second phase occurs, commences, it's going to be the Atlas band. Comes through from side of RG saying, uh, well, I expect perhaps another hero. Four Vin might be banned here, you know, and that's Franco. Yeah, I was about to say, like, to be honest, it's not out of character for RQ to pick up something like the Franco here. So perhaps RSGSG, they want to take this off the board first. I think that's a really good idea. The fact that they've already banned out the Kadra, they had a good idea that they weren't going to pick up the Franco within the first phase on the red side. So great preparation for the side of RRQ. But remember, RSG... On the second phase, they will have first pick. So I'm hoping RQ ban out that Franco sooner rather than later for this very last pick. We'll see, we'll see. It seems like now RSG SG taking their time for their last ban of the drafts. And they have established huh. that they will ban out that Kirita that we saw a couple of times when on this Kirita. It's good, it's solid. But I guess RSG saying, yeah, we don't want more team fight 
hero from you guys, RQ? Um, that's kind of interesting because they already have the Eve. Were they expecting Vin to go yeah. and pick it up as a support to try and one shot either Valentina, which is already hard enough, with the Petrify, uh, or maybe even the Beatrix to jump into the back line? Because for all we know, they could technically give Lapu Lapu over to R7 and does the same job, if not even better. Okay, but it seems like the Hayabusa is going to the, be the ban here for RRQ Hoshi. And on that Lapu Lapu, I was thinking that Yu Zong is still a possibility to be picked up. And so is the Cho mm -hmm. up until this point. So oh, RSG cool. first pick here. They need to secure either... Because I don't... I'm not really acquainted with the Singapore regions. Are they flexible? Do they put Valentina in these weird places or is this Valentina definitely going mid? It really depends on the results of their scrims and what they've been preparing here and I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be. kind of wish Jays was here because he probably would have given us more yeah. insight yeah. on it but you'll see him much much later down the road. Uh, is it going to be the Franco lock in early here? No! They're actually going to take the show to try and make it really difficult and put maybe... Uh, wait, let me double check the bands. Okay, Rock is still open to go into the off lane here. Very... Yeah, it's, it's a good option. I mean, we saw multiple times R7 playing that Brock and the outcome is positive, but I do want to say that Chopik is just very good for the East Singaporean side. Why? They needed ground control. They needed someone that can deny, someone can pick up, and that Cho is a perfect hero that can just set the tone for their team fight. Now, RRQ, what can they do? They want to be able to get into that back line, right? Because right now, the only person that they can do that is the Fredrin. So I'm thinking something oh, crazy here, Kufra. but okay. Kufra is going to be the choice to close out the drafts as well as the Lapu Lapu that Gideon mentioned earlier. And it makes sense, right? This was something that I was uh, concerned about. How will they go into the back line? They've solved it, but now RSG with the response, who are they going to be picking up next? Mm, that's a tough question, but a very good hero here. Vin is saying, yeah, okay, you ban out my hero. Atlas could do that. No problem. Let me put some heat on this Kufra to harass the back lines and to add to that they have Lapu Lapu that can synergize well with this Kufra. But what are we looking at here? Get in. Last hero for Singapore. I'm thinking it could be a pick. It could be a Franco. It could be a Yuzong here. One of the... Oh! Oh, <laughs> all right. I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. This time around, Ray is going to be like, you know what? I'm tired of these util. I'm not a tool. I want to carry this time around. We got some power picks and a Valentina in the house. Very excited to see how RSG is going to utilize this. I'm surprised, right? Because the information that we got when we were doing briefings about RSG SG is that Ray doesn't use assassins. He's more of the tank fighter type, but he actually brought the link this time. And my Not question. Gupra. That brings me to my question. My question was is it the wisest decision to be picking up the link, realizing that the Kufra was already picked up by RRQ Hoshi? That's a bold pick. So I guess mm -hmm. what they're saying we don't care. You have a Kufra. Nah, let me. Balls up, ball, yeah, let me just put it up there mm -hmm. and just... Just raise the posterior, man. Exactly. That's what you're expecting you to do. Raise the posterior, call me daddy. Let's jump right into this game. One of these teams are going to be making up into the upper bracket. The others will be dropped down to the lower. It's RRQ Hoshi up against RSG Singapore. Already so much tension, even in the audience, anticipating this next matchup. It's going to be do or die right now. As you can see here, Bray is going to be starting on the red buff first. A different pathing here, but they might clash both sides. So we'll see here. Again, spell check, item check, well, emblem check. Nothing to... Uh out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary, yeah. Mm -hmm, yep. I think in this particular situation, even Diablo understands that he wants to get as many trades as possible. So taking the Avarice in the laning phase against the Lapu Lapu is great. And forcing R7 to flicker, even better. Ooh, wow, that's huge right now. R7 already caught quite low here. Diablo seems to be very dominating that lane on the blue. But here we go. We saw that Bray on the lane. He decided with the Assassin Emblem. So expect a lot of showdowns happening as he's going to go in very aggressive that play style. Mm -hmm. Yep, and here we go. I mean, when we looked at the keys to victories the last time, RRQ needed to look for those hard initiators, and I mean, 
that's what we see with Vin on this Kufra. Let's see if they can control the tempo uh, as much as they want because RSG, even though they don't necessarily need to fight, they can go for split pushes if they want to. They have a very mobile comp with Ray and Lolzi already on two of the most mobile heroes in the game. Yeah, they need to somehow extract the split push potential from this Ling indeed. But I do want to note this, RSG, they can step off the gas. Remember, they have Chell, they have Ling. I expect more aggressive aggression from the side of RSG. Realize that our hero, I mean, Yiv needs to level eight level four, Kufra needs to level, needs to level four, but all I hear is silence from the right side. I mean, to be fair, RSG, they still do need to wait for level four as well, right? Because Lolzi is not going to be able to have that pickoff potential yet, but on the bottom side. Blink has petrified, forced to flicker away. Bravest fighter pops. R7 is a monster. Diablo, though, mounting on R7. Not enough damage. He realizes that, and he backs away as RRQ has the space to control and secure the first neutral objective by Secret Lab. It was really interesting because RSG understood that they were looking for a potential pick here down on the bottom side. Yes, it did fail, and that's due to just Clay being an absolute beast with his flicker, times it perfectly to get out of the right time, and R7 also being able to peel for him, but RSG never had any intention of actually touching the turtle, which begs the question, right? Where is RSG actually playing for? And I think they're going to be playing for Baby Cakes hoping that he evolves to Daddy Cakes sometime soon. Daddy Cakes. Daddy Cakes. I'm, I'm still not over that. Baby Cakes to Daddy Cakes, but here you go. Been already charging for Lozi. Still going to be able to get out for now, but you can see that both teams are trying to vie for that mid lane pressure. And honestly, Valentina is very good at clearing those waves, but the rotations seem to be lacking as compared to RQ, who are already in this top side. Mm, they want to punish, but notice that RSG on the bottom side making the same moves. Oh, Lozi gets caught here. Tyrant's Rage and Revenge connecting, but not enough damage. Lozi taking that. Even he holds the flicker, but bot side 2v1. Now, Wheel of Inflation pops Bravest Fighter. R7 flickers away, and no casualties for the first three minutes. This is how RSG SG strives, right? They are reading the map really well. RQ is trying to make some moves on their side, but the defense coming up for the Singaporeans, impeccable. Oh, Lozi trying to find the right Jekundo. Oh, flickers to the wrong side. Bray, time is a play. Real world position in the backside, too far off. And now we can see here one man, and that is Diablo gets taken down in the hands of Carey. I agree with you. Like, all everything that's been happening right now up until this point, it's so low kill. Everyone is just trying to play that macro game, and it seems like both of them are trying to read out one another. It does so, it seems apparent that in this fourth minute, RRQ leading with one kill, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter. As now, RSG, SG, they're already looking and vying to get to that next neutral objective, which is this turtle. And this is when the clash comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that RSG actually, actually wants to contest for this. They're posturing themselves, ready to collapse on RRQ, looking for their rotations and cutting them halfway through. Five men already in that vicinity. Lozi opening. Oh, Flicker! Jekundo connecting onto his clay. And we can see here the damage. Trying to find end. Baby Kai Flickers has a defense as well. Real one for relation. Finn, the one to fall first. But in the back side, it is actually going to be Lozi. Finds also gets taken down as Green is in a bad situation. A two main damage dealer as Skyler finds the triple. That's not good. That's not good. You don't want to be putting gold onto Skyler, who is on the hero like here who can snowball into that later stage of the game. For the moment, Araki Hoshi, they had the better trade. Three members taken down, they got the objective as well. And now they're going to go for a turret in this top side. And we got to check out exactly what happened because here is the instant replay by TikTok. Yeah, like, keep your eyes on Albert right now. Yes, it was a very good move right at the very beginning, but then Albert caught and immediately taunted the lane, causing the double kill to occur. They are still peeling heavily for Skylar, and they are revolving around his playstyle. For now, Clay, he's just trying to scale up. He's trying to get as much gold as possible. He's not expected to get kills, but the utility of his ult that, brings, that he brings to the table is just far more valuable. So let's quickly look at the items. And yeah, we don't see a defensive build coming out from Clay. Immediately, Ice Queen's wand. Right now, we can see the disparity of gold in the gold leaders as well. 4,900 with an example of 3,900. So right now, Carrie is how many items above 
the Beatrix. Uh, oh. To be Two. fair, yeah. Beatrix is trying to build a more expensive item. And yes, Corrosive Scythe is a little bit cheaper. Uh, not to mention that he already has the Swift Boots. There we go. Blade of Despair. I would have wished... I would have wished that Baby Cakes was able to finish one item rather than try to greed out to get the second one's components ready, uh, up and ready. But hey, that's just me. Oh, Lozy, questionable target there. Still able to back off RRQ. Good setup though. As take a look at Skylar. You have six minutes in, four kills already. But I haven't seen Vin really get his ultimate on the right person just yet. I feel like every time they go for an end gauge, he hasn't been able to maximize the potential that he actually has. I think he understands that he doesn't have to, right? Because if he engages and fails, that puts his team at a bigger risk of giving free gold over to RSG. And that's not what they want. They want to slowly build up the lead. They have a 2.6, and now it's just small cuts upon small cuts. Oh, where Dragon Finn gets taken down. Take a little Rosie there. Taking a lot Yay! of heat as Clay finds the kill. And now Roy's in trouble. Skyler finally the kill as well. But Bray finds compensation. Takes one down. And now Diablo we're using the split split again. Skylar, he mounts him. Can he make something? Baby oh! Cakes, shut down. And there you go. Baby Cakes, though, will be traded back by R7. It's crappy. It's everything. And this is RRQ. Okay. Honestly, I have to say, R7 should live this. But I have to say, Baby Cakes cannot be missing those shots on a stunned target, man. He was predicting the movement. He should have just shot as soon as the stun connected. Seeing now the turtle here, RSG, trying to grab space. Oh, Vin gets caught. We'll see. That Bray patiently waiting for the execution as now Diablo in the backside. But take a look at the backside here. R7 gets caught. Skylar though finds Diablo, traded back, and now it's going to be an all out war. Lozi down, and we can see Albert claiming the neutral objective, but Bray will find Skylar in the process. 3-4-2, but RSG lost the turtle. Yeah, they lost the turtle. It's really unfortunate. Albert, as of right now, is still at the exact same level as Ray, so it should have been a very clean 50-50. Let's see how much more punishment they can actually put. They don't actually get the mid-tier one. That's unfortunate. Wait, no, actually, Baby Cakes is going to whittle it down. So regardless, even though there is going to be more gold and EXP on the side of RRQ4 now, RSG's punishment after the turtle is going to be a big swing. That 2K lead, now absolutely gone. Yeah, ping pong match all across the board here between RRQ as well as RSG, as even though Bray is on that emblem, he is still going to be able to get a neutral objective take as well as a tower in that top side. So slowly but surely, they are advancing according to their keys to victory where it's said that they were supposed to focus more on these objectives and that's exactly what they're doing. I like it. It's a balanced game here. RRQ, you were in the lead. We're 2,000 ahead. RC though, with the earlier trade, it managed to equalize. Now, you can see he'll play. Will they find someone? Oh, it's that Kundo. And there you go. Albert is the target. We'll see though. Reinforcements come. This is the right question. Albert gets taken down though. Will there be any trades? And take a look at R7 on the backside. We can have it. Clay goes down. And R7 with the Braver Slider will not be able to find anyone else as RSG gets traded back two for two. Look. It's funny because it seems like RSG is playing into what RQ won, which is team fight, as they are losing members on the board. But look at Bray right now. He wasn't mm -hmm. involved in that team fight. He was more focused on splitting the map. He was more focused on getting those towers to the top side. And he's getting way more value in the fact that they have way more map pressure than RRQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. RRQ is just, I mean, th just the region of Singapore is really efficient at maximizing gold and opportunities. They do not miss a beat. But RRQ, it doesn't mean they're completely out of this. Look at the lead that R7 has over Diablo. A two-level lead. He is the difference maker in jumping into that back line and threatening baby cakes. Now we'll see though, Vin catching one. Now Lozi gets taken down. We were in population two of them. Bob out. I'll take a look. That huge baby cakes down. Lord, who gets it is oh RRQ may step on towards the gas, but they stay disciplined. And RSG fell. Falls with two down and as well as they didn't manage to get the Lord. RRQ played that team fight so well. Did you see R7 there going straight into the back line, taking down baby cakes and 
He's not having a great time. Look at his KDA, 3-4-1 right now, Gideon. Look, he was, this is the break even for RRQ, and now we see the accumulated lead from R7 making all the difference here. They want, again, the keys to victory. You want him to carry, just give him a carry type hero, and eventually he's gonna do it. A three level lead against Diablo so far, and Baby Cakes doesn't have enough gold to purchase a Winds of Nature to keep himself alive. Okay, and we're gonna see here right now, the Lord is going to be marching in that top side. No. Mm. For now, the, for now, when you have a link, you're already looking to kind of open up the map a little bit more, trying to slow down these waves, and that's Bray, all by himself taking care of one lane. He needs the rest of his team to focus up, hunker down, and clear this wave as quickly as possible. I mean, this is the first Lord, so it's still manageable, and RRQ will definitely capitalize those here. Teals in the mid side, and as well as top, has been taken down. But Bray, again, extracting the Ling prowess, Splitting push, split pushing, and yeah, finding the tier 2 bot side. He's also taking away all RQ's jungle, so he's farming up a storm oh at no. the moment. And look at the damage on the clay! Oh my god, Bray! Try and play the sneaky link, and there you go. He does not succeed as RQ. They were ready for that. Yeah, they were already waiting by the river brush, and that was really nicely done. And Clay, he didn't have his flicker at the time. He could have absolutely died there. And if and only if we saw Bray react with uh, with his Blade Tempest, I think he might have secured the kill and gotten out of there, but it's really tough to say because right now, RSG, even for Lulzy, is having a tough time to open up the map for the rest of his team. Looking at the player's goal, we see that Bray is second to Skylar at the moment and Baby Capes kind of falling a little too far behind. Is there any other winning condition that RSG, SG can rely on other than Baby Cakes up until this point? Uh, it, it's a bit tough. I would say that Roy is in a really good position. I mean, he's dishing out a lot of damage. The main issue is that he has to get in pretty close to the fight to steal an ultimate. And, and still, if they're planning for a fight, he has to steal the ultimate way before the yeah. fight even begins, rather in the middle of it. Okay, conceal. Oh, oh my god, that can knock next, but no fall on damage. Huh? Oh, then catches three, and Albert takes one. And we can see now the collapse that RRQ it was actually Lozi who set it up, but he gets punished right before the Lord. Man, and all the while, Bray's just chilling in this bottom side. RQ, are they aware of this or are they going to go straight for the Lord? Uh, this could still be a little tough here. Bray is level 15 to Aller's level 15. They are moving around trying to open up the map to make sure they know exactly where Ling could possibly be. He didn't show up bottom side, so here we go. Possible steal? No, is Archie gonna oh, attempt Bray, it? Bray, Bray, Bray! Oh. Nah, too late, way too late. Bray unable to do anything and he doesn't even have his purple buff, so it's just not worth it. Yeah, a little bit too late to the party and even Diablo what? stole the purple no. buff by accident. It was the little slime he left on the ground oh. that exploded. That's just so unfortunate at a time like now where, especially when Bray needed it the most, that purple yeah. buff. Hopefully that didn't cost them the game. I mean, it makes all the difference, right? Especially for a Ling. But right now, RQ with a 4,000 gold lead. And they have a Lord on the way. It's looking quite scary because RQ Oshi, they have the better high ground in my opinion. Only advantage perhaps that RQ, they are on cooldown. Spell-wise here, no flickers. So nothing too crazy, nothing too aggressive. Perhaps RSG, they might have the information. Maybe there's a good chance, but here we go. Inhibitors should start to fall. Let's see how is, how RSG responds to this on all sides getting shoved in. Wow, base turret mid side and top side has been taken down. RRQ, they are taking this slowly here. They want the bot side base turret first as RSG is still on the defense here. They are looking, they are waiting for the right moment perhaps. Looking for the right opening. Then charges does not connect here. You can see here still both teams just dancing around for offense and defense. Still playing very disciplined though by RRQ standards, right? Usually they would want to go in for that invade straight on to the base, but no, they have actually opted to be more careful in that decision making. They tried to go in for that bottom side, but RSGSG, they defended that pretty well. Yeah, and they still managed to hold on to at least one of their inhibitor turrets for now. But here's the problem, right? This was RRQ's 
big moment to try and crack in and force a fight onto RSGSG. Bray geniusly slowing down the bottom side of the waves and then putting it in a situation where the waves aren't stacked properly, only mid as well as topside collapsing, but not even at the same time. Then catches Diablo. Is this the right target? Split Split is there, but take a look at the damage the Skylar gives. It's too much. He gets date taken down and RRQ, a 5v4 <laughs> situation and Albert, he's just styling. I mean, Skylar, 9 to 3 no, KDA no. up until this point. He also has the Athena shield, so just in case he has to go a little too close to someone like Roy, who's already dealing a lot of damage, he's respecting that. He's trying to increase his abilities to sustain in these team fights. It's tough. It's tough. They're, again, RSG is really relying on Lolzy. And yes, Lolzy is trying to make these plays. He's dying for them. But right now, I'm looking at Roy and I need him to make a heroic play somewhere. He needs to back Lolzy up. He needs to be an active threat on the map. He's 0-1 and 8 so far. And 8 of those assists was with his team. But right now, he needs to do more. He needs to go that extra mile. Yeah, I, I get your point here as Bray. He's just chilling. He's just trying to do what he can do as a Ling behind. And yeah, I can see here the Lord is already um, contested. Yeah. It doesn't feel like Roy, uh, that uh, Bray is chilling. He's doing so much for his team with splitting those waves. But once again, the contest for the they Lord. Have to fight. Oh my god, catches Sufin with that Tyrant's Rage. Mortal Pops everywhere. Baby Cake, the first one down. Not a good sign as one, two, three, four bodies has oh, already Bray? been collected. And Bray gets shut down. Double kill for Clay. And this is going to be the end for RSG. The Kings of Kings will be confirmed securing the upper bracket. RSG will not be able to do and fight, will have to fight from the lower. Another crown for them to crush as RRQ Hoshi win this with a very dominant performance. At some point, it could have been RSGSG, but the way that RRQ played, they left nothing up to chance. They made little to no mistakes for RSG to capitalize on. And congratulations, as RRQ Hoshi are going to battle throughout M4 in the upper brackets. GG, well played to the kingdom here. Absolutely crushing it. Skylar doesn't feel like he missed position. Same goes to Clay. Their team moves as a unit, and the kingdom sticks together. The franchise giants face off, and it is going to be RRQ who will take the throne for now. But yeah, congratulations again, RRQ. Wow, what a performance. A solid one. I feel like it was quite textbook up to a point that it was just after they got the lead early game, it was just an easy breeze. Well, not an easy breeze because you have Ray just constantly harassing this, uh, the other lane, but it was a, um, I guess it was a textbook win. Ray, Ray was trying so Ray hard, was trying though, right? Hard, yeah. he, like, whenever his teammates are in the base and still trying to defend those last turrets, you can see that Bray trying to make something happen on the other side of the map. He was trying to put pressure on other sides of the lanes, like you mentioned in-game. And it was just so tough, it was so hard to watch because they honestly had a chance in my opinion. Yeah, they definitely did have a chance, but with Clay and R7 working in tandem with each other, it became very difficult with the box, with, with the edge of the box almost guaranteeing a free stun from a very long distance away against Baby Cakes. It made it so easy for the bravest warrior R7 himself to jump on in and finish up the job. It's just, again, yeah, it's just rinse and repeat from the side of RQ. I mean, they know how to deal that Beatrix, a lot of dive potential, and they just, again, again, constantly pressuring that marksman. We saw a couple of times where the fights, but it's actually Baby Cakes that is that has gone down first. That's yeah. not a good sign if you're an, R an RSG fan. But everything of that was like just really created by RRQ, right? They pushed Baby Cakes in a position where it was nice for someone like R7 to, to go in into the backside and take him out first. But I honestly thought it was quite a stalemate up until that point where the carry, Skyler, was able to get those three kills. And that 
really just changed the dynamic of the gold lane. Like at that point, BB Cakes was so far behind that the output damage from Skylar was a little too much for them to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I, I think, you know, Skylar put a really good performance considering that he had to face off a link and didn't even opt to go for the Winds of Nature super early on anyway, knowing that the rest of the map was going to actually keep up with his pace as long as he lives. So very interesting observations all around. And RQ, honestly, I think the way that they want, it feels like they quickly opened up chat GDP and type how to win MLBB quick, fast, and efficient, and they got the <laughs> script down, nailed it to a T. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, we yell it, and there you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to laugh even harder, so I got <laughs> it from here. We're, we're trying to chill, right? We're trying to chill on the caster desk right now. <laughs> But we are going to take a look at the item builds in just a few seconds to really see what exactly went down, who built what, when, why, and where, perhaps, is the question, as well as the post-game stats, because this is the last game of the group stage before we head into that knockout stage where everything is confirmed. No tiebreaker this time around, so let's see it now. All right. Yumi and Yanni, let's break this down as we see the post-game stats. 20 to 19, yet the gold differential only started to exponentially increase towards the later stages after one Lord, and even the second Lord becoming a very hot contestion point between both of those teams. Prior to that, if we pull back the time, the gold was a lot more even, uh, a lot more even, only a 5k lead, despite how many kills RRQ was able to achieve throughout the game. I mean, remember RSG, they managed to equalize at a certain point where, yeah, it was Skylar with 4 and 0 oh in the first five minutes of the game. But after what? I think the first, the last turtle it was, I think RSG, they managed to equalize. And it was actually after that, RRQ, they are more patient. They are more, yeah, they just set better, set up better team fights. Absolutely here. I think the one one of the few things that was a little disappointing to see was again, number one, Diablo, he did actually decide to take the Petrify knowing that he wanted to get on top of Skylar ideally. And I think RQ they adjusted very, very well. The first time that it happened, the first time that it happened and Skylar actually ended up dying, they said, okay, you know what? He's got Petrify, he has ways to get in onto the back line, so therefore let's cut that out. Let's wait until Diablo comes out first. Then we can almost guarantee get a free fight because without Flicker, there's no way to make that instant impact. Yeah, a very good adaptation coming in. Flexibility comes in from the side of RQ. Again, realizing that problem and finding out the solution. But shout out to Clay. 13 assists, 5 kills. It's technically his debut in M4, right? And he is starting with a banger. He is starting off really, really hot. Another interesting observation for me Number one, I was really hoping to see more from Roy here. He kept stealing the real world manipulation. And yes, there were times where it looked yeah. so, so good because it, yes, it does scale with the rest of his magic damage. And he pretty much had almost a full build. The last item could have been anything at that point in time. He could have gotten more utility. He could have gone for the blood wings if he was really, really rich and uh, really, really rich and greedy, but wasn't able to get to that point. Looking at the post match, uh, looking at the post match, I'm excited to see what kind of damage we were getting because R7, what a difference maker in that mid game. I completely agree with you. Let's see the stats here. It is going to be still yeah, RRQ leading in damage results, but it is still going to be Clay with the carry stat. Absolutely. Clay was playing it so, so well. He worked really well with R7, making sure that Albert is there to protect both of them when Vin jumps in. It's just a secondary line of defense, making it so hard for RSG to find an easy way on top unless they use map advantages to get the waves in the right position to foresee RRQ. RRQ's rotation. Yeah, but what I love about is Albert, 6 and assist, not... Yeah, usually he likes to play the flashy assassins, but utility, mm -hmm. he can do. MVP, who you got? Well, I definitely think it's coming down to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Skylar, playing a almost perfect game. Oh, Two good. deaths ruining that record. Oh, 10 to 5 on a carry. He was unstoppable from the get-go with a KP of 7 75%, this is the usual build now. Mm -hmm, 
-hmm. Rojan, Golden Staff, and DHS. It's so, so gross how good Carrie is, especially towards the hyper late game. Her only issue is her range. Yeah. But other than that, just wait for the abilities to come out. Wait for the heroes who are looking to take out the carry early on to disappear and things just fall into your hand. It feels like you're getting spoon-fed kills. Exactly. That is just, yeah, I mean, Scholar. And we saw glimpses that he wasn't really spoon-fed per se. It was him actually being aggressive, popping flicker towards the front side, and that's just killer instinct. Look, he is a big boy. He feeds it himself, is. man. He's like, give me that spoon. Give me that. No more airplanes. I'll do it myself. <laughs> oh, my God. In a minute, we are going to witness the highlights in case you missed the match, in case you missed the game. So here it is, the highlights from RRQ and as well as RGSJ. A lot of these fights really did come down to whether or not the box was being used in an effective area, right? Like Roy, this was a really good use of the bo uh, really good use of the box. Except when they got caught, they didn't realize that oh, Albert already had some combo points stored up to catch them off in that taunt. But that's when you start to see the adjustments from RRQ. The boxes become more tighter. The boxes are targeted towards Baby Keats to force him to either flicker out as soon as possible, and when it's down, or when the combo is done perfectly, not even having the opportunity to pop it. Look, pop dead instantly. Yeah, I mean, that's just, again, just execution to perfection. I feel like RRQ, sure, it wasn't a quote-unquote perfect game, but boy, oh boy, it was so hard for RSG to find a winnable team fight. Take a look at the fight. Albert is already, like, in front, and again, Vin catching multiple members from time to time. It's just so hard to, again, build the momentum when you have a lot of deniers and stoppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really, really tough overall. I would like to see more from it, but let's throw it over to Eterna for the interview. Eterna, take it away. Thank you so much, Casters, for that unforgettable game analysis breakdown. But now on stage, I am here with Captain R7 from...